Do you guys think that ghosts exist? Do you think that demons exist and evil spirits? And if so, how do these things work? I'm going to try to describe partly like what I believe about this, or, or it also might just be an idea, because in, in many ways I don't know what I believe when it comes to that that topic. But some ideas, and, and I, I spoke with my girlfriend about this uh, last night, and going back and forth, I f it, both of us felt like we were making sense of it like to each other in a way that... Um, was kind of like a first time for me in a way because I've like things were fitting together and I was understanding how it could be possible because that was my thing with like with what my my spiritual beliefs are my religious beliefs whatever you want to call them I didn't I couldn't fit ghosts into that as a reality like it, it was like they, it wasn't possible but now I see how it might be and there's a part where there's like a hole and I'm gonna ask you guys maybe you know how it would work or maybe I'll come to that conclusion through talking about it so the idea is this right so uh, as I've explained uh, before when it comes to like my beliefs and stuff it's like you're a spirit and then you decide to have a human life or you maybe you're forced to but you're a spirit first of all then you become a human you know, you're born you have a human life right and let's say okay let me just skip that so you have a human life and you die and then from the moment of your death, your spirit kind of uh, leaves the body and goes back to its home, the spirit realm. And in between the spirit realm and the human experience, there is this in-between space where you're aware of both. You're aware of what it's going to take to move, to go back home, and that is letting go of everything that you became attached to in life, including your body and, and everything about that. Um, so the normal process is to die. Your, bo your soul leaves the body. You go through that process and you move back into love, back into pure love and pure acceptance, unconditional acceptance, unconditional love, unconditional positivity, you know, a place where evil is is not capable of of existing. You know, that's what that is. That's what the process of, of death is, is leaving this realm of suffering, moving back into the realm of whatever the opposite of suffering is, or the lack of suffering, I should say. Now that's the normal process for someone to die let's say of course this is all just an idea right let's think about this like that's the normal way now what would cause someone to be stuck in that in-between state in a way where they are a ghost and they can like somehow communicate or be seen through these devices and through cameras and stuff by living humans how could why would first of all why would someone want to do that or how could it be possible that they would be stuck right so what if it's like this? And this could also be what a demon is. This could be an explanation of a demon. So first let's just talk about a simple version like I'm a soul, I come into this life and I'm living. Now, my brain has uh, chemical imbalances or there's something wrong with it and the way that my soul energy is experienced is a bit twisted, let's say, and I become a serial killer and you kill many people and then you die, right? maybe a part of that process of that in-between state of moving from here back into our home a part of the process may be the need uh, like a part of it is when you do pass through that and you do go through the process and you do make it home you will have to feel remorse for everything you've done you will have to actually experience empathy you know because as, as a serial killer let's say chances are I will, you're not feeling that you know in that life you're just it's just pleasurable for you to do what you're doing it's what you're into it's what you're interested in you made a, a hobby or maybe even a career out of it right like it's all you care about and you just do that you kill as many people as you can till you get caught right some sick people out there do this now you know I don't believe in hell but that could be hell like that can be described as hell and this is what my girlfriend said and it kind of pieced together these realms and makes sense how demons would exist in hell right so hell is is uh, basically just being in that state where you are so afraid you're so afraid of experiencing the remorse you're so afraid of having to experience what you put those people through and really like face it you know as an individual just face it or face it in front of God you know because that's really what you're doing when you go back home you're facing it in front of God uh, you're facing it in front of all your peers you know and you're going back to them it could be a, this ex this deep sense of fear and shame not wanting to go back not wanting to go through that process and have to feel it so 
they stay in the space where they're closer to this life, you know, and where they can still experience that identity, which was a bit twisted and um, incapable of empathy and treated people more like toys than actual uh, other, you know, sentient beings to interact with and give love to and receive love from, you know, treating them like, like, puppets and toys and like playthings, you know what I mean? Like objects. Um, because being that they this soul supposedly did not want to go through that that healing experience and go back home, they maybe you are allowed to, maybe we really do have free will and you can choose as a soul to stay here as long as you want. And I'm sure time is experienced differently in this realm and whatnot. So if this is the case and there are many souls who have done this or at least some who are hanging around, uh, this would make sense to me. Like it's the murderer that's hanging around and they're uh and they're just they're afraid you know they're afraid of of love because of the the life that they've experienced maybe they've forgotten i don't know this this is just an idea because like i said ultimately i'm not sure how this would really be allowed to happen but maybe that's not really how it works like I said, if free will exists, this could be it. And perhaps the idea of someone like Satan, like the most evil, the first evil one to turn away from God and God's plan, which is this cycle of life, living and dying and living and dying and going back into love every time and experiencing the contrast. The person who said, screw that, I don't want to keep going through this torture. I just want to be here and, and stay here and learn how to be better at like ruling here. Maybe Satan was the first one. I mean millions of years ago or whatever i mean whenever the first because satan in my mind is an entity that only exists in earth on earth you know it has to do with the human experience and the human timeline so so maybe this was one of the first super messed up people um, or the first one who decided you know what because i do have free will i'm not going to go back up there i'm not i'm not up there you know i'm not going to go through that healing experience i'm not going to relive everything that i've done to these people i'm going to stay here and i'm going to master this level the level which is that in-between state you know and being that that individual if this was the case they have so much more experience millions of years or th hundreds of thousands of years or whatever they have so much more experience than these other people like these other serial killer types or whatever like i said who do who are afraid to face the music and they just stay in that in-between state um those people compared to this one who's been there forever it he does rule them you know he would rule them. He would be the most knowledgeable about how to manipulate the minds of the living and how to influence them through the mental plane. And this is what this is part of what that's like. So, so 3D. We're in the three third dimension. Then you got fourth, fifth, sixth. It goes higher, and everything expands. Right? I don't know which one I would say the where the spirit realm is, but it's at least in the fourth, fifth, fourth. You know what I mean? It's it's expanding more to be in this in between state is is in my mind in my you know the way i imagine all this the way it fits is that it's a two-dimensional state and that's why you can't necessarily see a ghost you can't necessarily see a demon you know two-dimensional things exist within the three-dimensional realm you know a two-dimensional surface or like a line you know what i mean like um these things are this what this is made of like so that's how an area can be uh, haunted or something because it's the spirit or group of spirits or whatever can exist two dimensionally in that three dimensional space so you can't see them but they're still there and you can feel them right and they can influence you same thing about uh, a thought in my mind is probably I guess could, it could be described as two dimensional a thought is not something that you can see physically touch it's not three dimensional it's less than three dimensional you know and that's why demons or these maybe demon is just another word for ancient spirit who has never left and who has hung out forever thousands and thousands of years in this in-between state so you know hell uh, so to speak these maybe they have like i said this mastered maneuvering the two-dimensional space within this realm and that's how they can uh, find their way into your mind and pervert it and corrupt it and things like this and why would they do this? You think like, what's the plan? There probably isn't a plan. Like I said, it's just if you if you've already decided that you're not going to take part in the in the rebirth and the healing and the cycles and growth and g evolving as a, as a, as a soul, and eventually merging with with whatever you would merge with at the ultimate point of that process, um, this would these would be individuals who decided to say, you know, I'm not going to do that. 
I'm not interested. I'm not interested in that. And if I want to do that later, I have an eternity to do so, right? So right now, I'm just going to do whatever I want, and whatever you well, whatever you want or whatever you can within that in in between state. And basically, if you don't want to face the music, you're going to have to focus on where you came from or where you just were, which is the three dimensional plane. And like I said, treating people like they are toys, like they are pawns, like it's all just a game, and um, empathy is not really experienced by these people. You know, they can feel that that they're afraid of it, they fear it, because demons, uh, evil spirits, lost souls, anyone who would be stuck in this realm, um, the only one who can save them is God. Really, the only one who can save them is their is their self, because it is a free will realm, and because it's the in between state, they still have that free will. You know, the free will that comes along with being a human and stuff. So it's up to them to decide, I want to go into God or into love, whatever you want to call that thing. I want to go into, you know, freedom. And and uh, so, yeah, I mean, that thing, going into that thing, that thing is the thing that can save them, but they have to decide to do that. And deciding not to, yeah, you're just going to focus on messing with people and stuff. And so I hope that all made sense as I'm trying to explain it like you know normally a, a, a healthy person will live a life you will have your successes and your failures and then when you die it's very clear the path you know you go you go back home because as you die you realize oh yeah this was just a dream this was just what it was just a, a temporary experience now I remember where I was really from and why I came here and all this stuff and you go back and you heal and you you feel the pain that you put other people through and you and you feel the happiness you put them through you feel all of it it's a lot of it's intense I'm sure and then you, from that point on, you, you fully enter back into your spirit form. You're more open, you're less defined form in the spirit realm. I don't, I can't speak on the business that goes on there because I have no clue, but you do that. You know, that's a normal process. And then maybe eventually, I think, you decide, I'd like to go back again. See if I can do better this time or do differently. Or maybe it's not even about that. Maybe just I see what I can experience this time. It might just be for fun. Um, but, you know, as with any game, there's going to be people who are kind of like deviant or, or mini games, you know, they're like cheaters. They'll do things just to, uh, you know, the people, the people, uh, the, the demons, so to speak, in, in the in-between realm, in the hell realm, or in purgatory, in between these two places, spirit realm and earth, these demons could be seen as like uh, people who glitch out of the map in a video game and then they start like killing you from the outside, you know, and you're like, what the fuck, dude, like you're ruining the game you know what i mean like we could have just had a nice peaceful thing here and you're ruining it but it's if you've ever been that person and i have who to glitch out of a map and do that kind of stuff um especially at the age when i did it it's like hilarious you're laughing you think it's so much fun it's just funny to mess with people and get reactions because you know ultimately it's just a game you know and that's maybe what these demons are doing and that's what my experience of these things have been they they i mean i mean it can there's different levels of evil and and you know horrible things but in a very real way, it seems like in their mind, it's just a game. That's why they're able to do that. That's why they're able to do such horrible things that everyone else would think are so is so nasty and evil and so dark. Because to them, they can see they're in that in between state. You can see that morality is is a, a construct of the human realm. Like beyond the human realm, not only does morality not exist, but like the, things exist in such a way that evil is not even possible that's why morality doesn't morality doesn't exist because you can't do bad things in the spirit realm it's not structured in that way and people everything is open and everything is connected it's like instant tele, telepathic uh communication or instant telepathic knowledge between all all forms that exist in the spirit realm there is no room for that for like deceiving one another you know that's the major thing you can't deceive someone and you can't uh, trick them or or do any of that stuff there because it's just not possible everything's open you know you can only do that stuff here and who better to do the deceiving and tricking here than those who are like i said those who have decided to indefinitely remain in that in-between state where they can still sense us and we can sense them and they can through years thousands of years perhaps of experience like the oldest one uh, and any old ones, any ancient ones that are that are trapped or uh, who have decided to set up camp in that place, they they can they've learned and they spent time practicing on how to not only sense us but um, reach out, you know. And then there are unfortunate souls here who want to reach out as well. And then that's when they meet and they and it's like I got you now. And the ones who are reaching out from here, they think that they're going to contact 
they think that it might be an angel or, or a dead relative or, or something. And maybe you can experience those things as well. But um, to, the na to the naive, they won't know the difference. And those ancient ones, those supposed evil ones, those tricksters who exist in this in-between state, you know, they're happy. They got you now. It's, it, it's such easy bait. These the naive people who want help from higher positive beings, but they don't know where to look. So they go into their mind. And in, their, in the mind is where, you know, the devil or demons as a whole have their hands reached out. Or they've got, you know, they've got their lures in there. They're fishing. It's just floating around. And once they, once they feel it, once they feel any kind of calling out to them, any reaching out, like, I wonder if demons exist. I wonder what it would be like if they were in my life and stuff like this. You know, any sort of interest, any true interest in experiencing stuff like poltergeist activity and uh, demonic possession of any kind. Uh, they can sense that and they will latch on to you and I've experienced this firsthand without getting into all the details um, that could be a future video maybe if I ever feel like it it's extremely personal what happened um, and of course and I'm open to this it, it, when it's all said and done this could just be hallucination I mean obviously everything I've spoken about in this video is just an idea but even my supposed experiences of um, interacting with demonic forces or at least let's just say ancient evil forces <laughs> at least that's what it felt like um my own experience of that could easily and and i'm very open to it being hallucination or a kind of uh a form of psychosis or something uh, but anyway like i said i mean 16 minutes i think i've explained enough about this hopefully you understand what i'm trying to say about my understanding or my beliefs about this whole thing um well, I just thought of, uh, thought, of, thought of another point here, but let me continue with this. My question to you is, I've heard many stories uh, about ghosts, right? Like, um, And I guess that's, let me make that distinction first. When I say demon, and I, I am referring to souls who are ancient and who've been for thousands of years practicing navigating the space, the in-between space, and uh, in between that purgatory realm and us, and influencing us and reaching out to us and blah, blah, blah. And they can do that, um, it's almost like in an omnipresent sort of way from that realm. They can feel into like anyone pretty much that they want to. Uh, now, uh, a ghost would be a different idea. That would be somebody who doesn't have all that practice. They probably just died. They probably just had one of their first or one of the most traumatic lives ever. And now they're like still attached to either an, either an object or like attached to just the memory of that life. So they stay in a certain place. They stay in a certain house where something horrible happened or maybe something good happened and they died too soon, you know? But they stay there and they're attached. Now, it would make sense to me that a soul might stay, hang around for a while, but then after a while they would notice, and I mean a good soul, not someone who plans to mess with people, but as far as like the, the random ghost activity that doesn't seem harmful, but it's just weird, you know? In a household, for example, when that's happening, it would make sense that maybe they had a great life or a troubled life and, uh, they didn't finish what they wanted to and they were still kind of obsessed with it but after a while you think they would realize and they would feel the pull from the spirit realm to go back home and and to heal and come back and, and maybe even meet up with the people that they miss like it it seems weird to want to stay there or to be confused about staying there and another thing that that fucks me up um and i guess this is sad if this is true just thinking about it now you hear about children a lot children that get killed and then there's like children entities children ghosts that people report seeing and hearing and playful ghosts you know what i mean that just seem not like they want to hurt you but like they're like even those are trapped in that purgatory realm now if that's true that there is no one there helping them on the other side helping them to come like come on like some guardians that can take them the children that uh they can take them through that barrier so they realize, oh yeah, I'm not a child, I'm a spirit, that was my life, I'm going back home now. Before they can, if they're not able to be helped through that, it's sad because they're basically, they're stuck in this weird kind of sketchy purgatory realm where it's not necessarily a true hell, but it is ruled by hellish figures, it is ruled by demons. The demons might not instantly make themselves known, but they're in that same space with these children and they could probably easily um, pervert them. Uh, they could easily corrupt them because they're in that so, in a confused space, you know? And maybe these supposed children, ghosts, you know, these ghosts, these entities that that are of children who were murdered or something in a home, and then they still, people report experiences with them. 
maybe it was like one of their first lives ever as a human and that's why they're so confused it's like their first death process as a soul they've never even gone through that before maybe that's that could explain it like that's why they don't understand just to go through the barrier it's not a big deal there's nothing to be afraid of because i don't think from what if if a lot of these accounts are true that people say about ghosts it sounds like there are some mean ones and there are some nice ones that just seem to be lost right and it doesn't make sense to me uh other than how i just explained like why a nice one would hang out like why would it why would you choose to you think if you're loving and you're still connected with the your heart you would recognize the value of going back into the spirit realm where nothing but love is possible you know and nothing but unconditional acceptance is possible uh like why stay and, and and torture yourself so maybe it would make sense like i said if they were just confused or or maybe that's all an illusion maybe even those little playful spirits that people think are of the children dying maybe that's not really what it is maybe these demons are just all the ones that are doing that and they they do that they'll find like a a, a scenario where that happened where some children died and and whatever and then they say now we'll start doing that activity in this home knowing because as cunning as they are and they're more cunning than any of us if you've lived thousands of years in a purgatory realm with the intent of fucking with humans you know you've got a lot of uh a lot of weight when it comes to playing tricks on people when it comes to deceiving people you know you know more than than any individual human would uh maybe they knowingly put that little poltergeist activity out there as a lure um to find to see if people will look up the story oh my god there were some children murdered in this house let's we need to contact them and save them and then when you try to contact them you're just in a way opening that door and asking you're like oh it's an open invitation for anything to step inside of you you think it's it's these little help helpless lost souls of children in reality they may have already moved on and, and done what they want to do and you're just you're just interacting with demons you're interacting with those ancient ones who exist in two dimensions within this realm by choice and they have for thousands of years and uh, they aim to toy with you um, if this if this was all true and what I experienced that I mentioned earlier that my experience with uh, a demonic entity was real they're not all like they're not all gonna make you want to kill people like it's not like they're all gonna put a voice in your head like kill yourself or, or kill whatever you know it's not all that it's, it's some of it is just simply fucking with you trying to get you just making it feel like you're losing your mind you know like maybe I'm a demon maybe I'm just your thoughts you know what I mean? Oh, but here's some unexplainable, um, unbelievable synchronistic event that you somehow like knew was going to happen. Was that your thoughts or was that the demon? Or like, you know, th there's like all these ways that these things can just fuck with you. Like I said, they're just, I guess, staying occupied, you know, doing what they can to avoid facing the music, which really isn't that big of a deal. Like, it's not like in reality, that's what's so sad about this, this scenario, if it were true, because facing the music as i'm saying it isn't like you're not going to be punished you aren't punished for being a serial killer or a rapist or a pedophile you know as much as humans want that as much as it does happen in the human realm and people like that get killed and killed in prison and stuff because no one likes them uh in a spiritual sense facing the music what i'm saying is just like i said you have to go through the experience of what you did to those people and you experience it as a real, as a healthy person, not as someone with no empathy, because that might just feel interesting as well. If you, if you're like a sociopath or a psychopath and you get killed, maybe it's not that bad. Maybe it's just interesting because it's even you are like an object and a toy, uh, a plaything. You know, I don't fully understand like psychologically what's going on with these people, but just an idea. Um, I'm saying in order to heal, and and if they did want to say, you know what, I'm not going to be a demon anymore, and I want to be healed, and I want to go back into the cycle of life as a as a soul with my brothers and sisters, and my father and mother, uh, if they were to choose that, it would mean feeling a lot of pain that they've never felt before, a lot of pain that they never felt before, especially if you can imagine being one of those ancient ones, hundreds of thousands of years. We're talking a long time being in that in-between state ruling hell you know because you're afraid to be healed um imagine if their original uh decision to stay there was because like i said maybe they were a very new and naive soul that had one of these just by chance or maybe they chose to just i don't know how that works but maybe they had a horribly demented life 
and they did horrible things and they became attached to it they became addicted to it and they never wanted to leave that they fell in love with it you know they actually fell in love like it's not real love but it's like that obsession they became obsessed with it from day one from life one as a soul imagine that and they said you know what fuck it i'm not going back i love this you know i'm obsessed with this i'm gonna i'm gonna here i can have power in the spirit realm i can have power in the spirit realm we're all equal you know we're all connected in the spirit realm here i can have real power and i can uh and through practice i can influence these pawns these humans because they they see when you're in the in-between state or in the spirit realm you can see that humans are blind humans most humans other than those who are uh, quote unquote gifted or they've been wired in a certain way other than them most can't really see spirits most can't tap into this most can't uh most can't ever experience it they're just like they're blind to that they have amnesia to the whole the whole their whole home you know and the whole purpose of life because that's part of what life is so you guys, you come and you immerse yourself in it and and you live a life and then when you come out you can reflect and 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 go from there i imagine um and yeah and i will say this at the end of this uh whether demons or evil spirits that fuck with your head and, and latch onto you and follow you through your life like those kinds the ones that aren't in a location the ones that actually follow you home follow you into your dreams if you've ever experienced this and especially if you're experiencing it right now um we're all different uh, but the only thing that worked for me was in my mind and in my heart um addressing well first of all addressing the the first of all admitting that it's a demon admitting that that's what it is because that's what the experience has been saying that it is forever you know not saying oh it's just i can just ignore it and it'll go away because ignoring it is like a, is like taking pressure off of the demon's shoulders it's like oh and I, I can chill out now he's not even on to my case you have to tell them you have first of all like um what how can i put this uh you address them directly and tell them that they're not allowed in your space. You take your power back. The power, because it's always been, it was within your power to let them in and to have that initial interest which allowed them into your into your brain. Uh, telling them that that's no longer going to fly. You're not you're not allowed in my life. You're not allowed in the life of anyone in my in, in that I love. Anyone that I know, you can't just like shift into them. You aren't allowed here. Just tell them to go home. They probably won't go home, but you can tell them to go home. As in, go back to the spirit realm, do what's right, you know what's right, stop fucking with people. But you don't, but you can't treat it mentally like it's a battle, like, ooh, I'm fighting a demon, because that's, they, they love that, that's what they want to do, and that's what they are much better at than you are. It's not about fighting, it's just claiming your, your space, you know, taking your space back. If you need help doing that, you have to find help doing that, I don't know, but there's, there's a way to do that. Anyway, in combination with, with that, um, with that explanation and making a ritual around it would be good too like saying like fucking this is it like it isn't gonna fly anymore you're not allowed in my life or in my brain and you never were in combination with doing that what I did that worked for me was um, addressing God now addressing God directly and if you don't have a, a, a working concept of God and you think God is like that Christian God that everybody hates and it's like, fuck God, you know, like a lot of people have that attitude. They're like, think of this old man that tells you that believes in slavery and stuff like that. Um, if that's what you're thinking and that's what you're addressing, that's just all going to be in within your own head and whatever demonic stuff you've got going on is going to stay because you you need to find out where God is if you don't. And I don't know how to explain that. But address God, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you what happened to me, I guess. So when I did this, when I finally addressed God, I realized that for like the two-year duration when I had this demonic activity going on in my mind and in my dreams and, uh, and in these delusions and stuff, for those two years, I never th even thought about God. I swear. Like that's, and I didn't realize that until I addressed God. Um, I may have used the word and blah blah blah, but I had I'd taken this maybe as a result of of the uh, attachment to this demonic activity. I had taken this stance of like, kind of like what I just said, like, psh, you know, psh, like what God, you know, I was acting like that's not real, but somehow these demons were, you know, um, basically uh, 
ideologically you have to take the flip side of that perspective and, and adopt that you know God is real the demons are not real the demons are not real God is what's real and God is God is love love is God God is everything love is everything everything is love by adopting that 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 ideology there's no more room for demons they still might be out there doing their thing but there's no more room for them in your life not in your mind because we control our mind through the software we control our minds through the programming you know and what is programming it's your beliefs depending on what beliefs you have you know like believing that it was even possible for a demon to enter my life and influence me is what is is the first thing i did wrong that allowed all that stuff to happen to me right and it's the, and it's what anybody does it's that curiosity and like wanting to contact something else you know when really all we should be interested in contacting and staying in contact with and forming a relationship with is the one true god god which is love yada 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 you know the highest ever and anyway when i did this when i when i mentally or, or through my heart like addressed god and uh and realized that i hadn't done that and as long as i said i had uh i felt the the heaviest feeling of guilt and shame that i've ever felt in my life and i cried really hard and it had been a long time at that point since i had cried over anything because I, what I was experiencing more was like anger and weird fucked up like just from the demonic activity like fucked up kind of things you know twisted emotion and twisted reactions and like demented kind of um, false happiness you know uh, it's difficult to really put words to all that I'm not the best at that but um, like I said I broke down I had an absolute breakdown which was very healing and and uh, and uh, I saw at that moment that it was all me, you know, like, it was my doing, the whole thing was my doing, and it was because I turned my back on love, and God, and God's love, you know, love's love, <laughs> the highest form of love, I turned my back on it, I turned my back on that which creates all things, the force which creates all things, the force which, which creates love, the force which uh, acts out love, the force which is love, I turned my back on all of that. And that's what caused everything to kind of get worse for me. And that's what caused that activity activity to increase. And that's the only thing that ever got rid of the demons for me. Like I said, the combination of basically banishing them. And then, in a way, apology, apologizing to God and, and giving my life back to God. And it might sound confusing to speak with these terms like ghosts and souls and spirits and demons and God. Because I'm not a Christian. I don't believe in the Christian Bible. I use these words because they're the most direct. They're the most direct. I could use, I could say source instead of God and everything would be just as fine. I think I could say source. Um, and for demons, I use other words, you know, evil spirits, ancient ones, blah, blah, blah. But I'm using these terms because they're just very, they're very clear and it's describing exactly what I'm describing. I understand some people have a problem with it and as you watch this video, you might just, uh, what I'm saying is don't try to fit it in with some Christian ideology. In a way, you can if it helps you to understand. But I, I don't believe in the Bible. I don't, I don't believe in uh, all of this. And I know I use, I know I said the word Satan, and I'm talking about like this one. That's just, just the idea of that. You know, I was trying to explain the whole process of everything. At least it's interesting to think about these things. Like I said, I'm open, and I, and I think I, I go back and forth depending on my mood and where I'm at in life, uh, as far as whether or not this was all a psychotic episode that lasted two years or it was exactly what it appeared to be and what it presented itself as which was not that it, it you know pre presented itself as uh me accidentally but um admittedly inviting demonic energy or a demon into my life which latched on and followed me around for two years maybe it wasn't two years i don't know the time frame it's between one and two years when it was really uh active I know most of you are just going to think this is so crazy. Not the Probably not the beginning of this video because I spoke about it like that, but talking about my own whatever. It's going to make me look crazy or whatever. But I know that also, I know for a fact that there are several of you who watch, who can relate firsthand to this. I know at least a couple intensely who can, you know, who really will. Um, for many people, uh, they will relate to it through aliens, 
through uh, extraterrestrial contact and UFO sightings which coincide with this demonic activity and maybe other people don't maybe people have the opposite of that you know UFOs which coincide with positive activity but um, I think for most of us who have experienced it in the beginning it is very positive and it feels incredible that you finally have made contact with like some other being it's not until a year or two later or more maybe that you realize uh, it's a major mistake and what I'm trying to say at the end of this video now is just that the mistake doesn't need to be a permanent mistake you don't have to live forever with that mistake you can do the right thing but it's going to require rearranging your entire ideology and, and all of your beliefs about religion and spirituality that is if you if you even want it to end you know and for someone who has for someone who's an atheist as in terms of like the traditional idea of god but then they still have these experiences that are demonic which present themselves as extraterrestrial or or angelic <laughs> you know angelic or whatever whatever they're presenting themselves as and whatever you're experiencing if you don't have a working knowledge of where god is or how or should i say how to access how to address god or how to connect how to connect with i should say if you don't have a working knowledge of how to do that you need to build that if you ever want to stop that activity otherwise the activity will continue i can't say whether or not it will worsen i can't say whether or not there are other ways to get rid of it but it seemed to me that the most surefire way the most effective and like final way to put an end to all of that crazy shit that was going on in my head was by doing what i said uh we doing what i did you know turning back to god and and uh and loving god that's 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 the most surefire way to do it you know there were some things that helped i would sometimes chant om mani padme hum i may have pronounced that incorrectly right there but i would chant it i would listen to it i would listen to other um um divine chants and things and and it seemed to kind of break it, it broke it kind of breaks some of the activity but um it's not like banishing any demons it's not ending ending your involvement with them like i said the hardest part and what takes the longest is probably acknowledging to yourself and admitting what you have done what you have gotten yourself involved with honestly like actually what it really is because there was a lot a lot of time where i was thinking like this is probably just in my head or whatever but it wasn't until i acknowledged it as real that i could really uh, address the problem you know because initially what had happened let's say it was all just a a product of my imagination and demons don't exist and all that shit i said earlier in the video isn't true that was all just an idea let's just say that it's all it's just psychosis like i said it's mental disorder mental illness let's say that's what it was originally it was caused by me taking a part of my my consciousness bringing it outside of myself and treating it like a real thing that i could then interact with that's really what it was uh, if you look at it through strictly um, physical you know three-dimensional world view if you look at it in that way that's what it was you know trying to uh, connect with my spirit guide and then start to channel messages from it and the ideas like this that's how you could argue that that might happen in, in, a, in a world where there was no such thing as spirit or spiritual realms and when you die that's it you know in a very scientific world that's, that's what I took with my imagination as uh, maybe it's a um, maybe only some people can do this maybe everyone can do it but my imagination is, especially at that time was very powerful and very active and I think it's still pretty active but in a different way anyway I, I allowed myself to take like a piece of my energy put it in front of me treat it like it was real and start interacting with it and because my imagination isn't the most pure and it is and there's some pretty dark sides to things sometimes and i'm capable of very dark thoughts maybe that's what perverted the whole thing and i allowed it just to slip away from me because like i said in the beginning it did seem very nice i thought that i was connected with a spirit guide it later turned into um extraterrestrial like psychic uh, communication with extraterrestrials which later i realized the whole time or it seemed like the whole time was just demons because when i looked at my life and what had changed it was not uh, necessarily for the better it was a lot of distraction from uh, what i really wanted to do a lot of power had been taken from me and given to this imaginary thing that i had created or maybe this real thing which had deceived me maybe i deceived myself you know like i said ultimately i'm open to all these ideas because time has passed since then i like i said i'm not connected to it anymore because i love god now and 
I address God on a regular basis. I, I, I keep God in my mind, occupying my mind, rather than demonic forces and weird, twisted shit like that. Admittedly, there was this initial interest that got me into that, you know, that, that made me, that allowed me to open up my mind to some, for something like that to happen. I don't think I wanted it, wanted it to happen consciously, but in, unconsciously, in a way, maybe I did. Because I had that interest. I was like, because I always told myself, and I guess it's true now, even though I'm saying I'm going back and forth, like maybe it was just my my mind, but I always told myself, like, I'll never know if that shit is real, like demons or ghosts or spirits. I don't, I'll never know if that's real unless I experience it firsthand. And I experience, I'll, what I can say, whether it was my, you know, whether it was all coincidental or not, I experienced some things even physically that I can't explain to this day. I saw things that I can't explain, uh, and I experienced things that I can't explain that happened in my physical space around me and and physical uh, vision in front of me, you know, sightings, uh, like songs, a song playing on my computer that I didn't even know I had on my computer that I've never heard before from an artist who I had heard of but never actually downloaded, a song just clicking on on my uh, computer, then you look at, and then looking at the clock and it's like a certain time, you know, things like this. Um, there was, like I said, there was crazy stuff that happened, and I can't remember all of the details, and I wish I wish I could to make an interesting video, but uh, it's interesting enough just talking about this stuff. So yeah, whether ultimately it was all coincidental and delusional and hallucination or whatever, uh, I saw what I needed to see from that realm of experience, and I decided the experience is real, and uh, it's not nice. So I, I did what I could to, to get out of that, you know. If you know, again, I'm going to say this, especially if you've watched this whole thing now. And if you've watched this whole thing, maybe you are just interested in these crazy ideas coming from this person on YouTube. Or maybe you can relate. Um, if you can relate and you do think and you have thought before that that's what's going on with you, that you are in contact with either a demon or a group of demons or an evil spirit or these ancient ones or whatever I'm talking about, if you're in contact with them and they've been, they introduce themselves to you especially, but they may still be right now interacting with you as if they are something else, as if they are something that's like maybe a little bit good. Um, I recommend you, you be honest with yourself about what you have felt and what you know is true and put an end to that in whatever way you can the ways that i described maybe only worked for me because of my own past like i was raised catholic and stuff and like there were certain frameworks that already exist and they still exist deep in my mind so like that's what i had to use to escape that that uh to escape those forces or to banish those forces somebody who didn't have that background might find the uh, relief in a different way and I know many people, this could anger people and this could do whatever, but I'm going to say it anyway because it's, I'm thinking about it and I've thought about it a lot. Um, so I go back to what I was just saying, kind of, if you, if you feel this way, you know, and you felt it before, maybe a long time ago, but then you gave up on that idea and you said, nah, it's probably not demons, you know, and then you turned to science and you started taking medication and things like this to stop those demonic symptoms. Um, if that worked out great for you and everything's fine, then that's that's great, and maybe that's all that ever was. But if and none of that shit is really working, and the moment you stop taking it, it, everything is still there. All that same shit is still there. In my opinion, it means that you still have a demon attached to you. You haven't addressed it as real, and you haven't gotten rid of it. You haven't you haven't you know gone back to God yet. Um, you 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 know you haven't turned you haven't um gone home yet so to speak when it comes to where your heart is your heart is in the wrong place and it's confusing when they've been with you for years and they've been all they've been doing is fucking with your mind for years you know what i mean and confusing you and putting this in front of you and putting that in front of you and putting thoughts in your head right and it's hard to uh it would be hard if this if any if anything i'm saying even matters and it's true it would be hard to admit that you did mistakenly turn your back on the problem years ago and start thinking that you were solving it through science but really you were just hiding the original thing you know probably sounds so weird of me to be talking like this because i'm going back and forth and stuff 
But I guess what I'm saying now is, in a way, um, even though I know it's, it could sound like bullshit and it might ultimately be bullshit, when I'm being honest with myself about what I believe, I do believe there are some people like this, and I believe I've met them. Uh, but I would never say this. I would never talk to them about this. I would never say that they are one of these people. Um, or maybe I would if I got close enough with them, but it's hard because it's very frustrating and it makes you angry. Um, you know, you f it makes you angry if someone so sounds like they're attacking these remedies which have helped you so much to find some relief from that demonic activity, those hallucinations, the psychosis that is sinister in nature, that came out, seemingly came out of nowhere, but when you really go back and you piece things together, you realize it came from your own actions. Whether it was rituals or, or uh, uh, Ouija boards or uh, reading some weird book or uh, trying to practice channeling spirits, anything like this. No matter what it was, there was probably something down the line that started that. Um, I'm not of, I don't hold the belief that these forces I've been speaking of can just randomly latch onto someone just because they're weak and then start chain fucking with you. Maybe they can if you're weak enough, but I think... In most of our cases, those of us who have gone through these things, it was because of our own actions. Like I said, maybe even if it was like this un, this subconscious wanting for something like that, like something like this unconscious wanting for something like that to happen, so that we could have proof of something more than physical, so that we know at least there's more than this, right? Even if that's what it was, that might have been it. And uh, as I was spoken with my girlfriend, like I said about this uh, last night, and, and and she connected this. All, a lot of people that she knows used to be in this like new age, airy fairy kind of mindset, and, and in little communities and stuff, and talking about you know channeling spirits, channeling your guide, connecting with your guide, and all this kind of stuff. A lot of them now she looks like on Facebook and stuff, and they're suddenly maybe not suddenly, but now as time has passed, they have turned into more devout Christians. Like, they've chosen a very fucking sharp focus, like, you know, the image of the cross. Uh, I, I mean, these things are like... I can, I'll give Christianity that. You know, I'm not a Christian, and uh, I don't have anything against attending service and stuff like that, but, um, you know, it is what it is. I, it's not for me, but I, I can see, and, and what is for me and what works is that powerful symbology of, like, God there's no there's no confusing it you know when you when you focus on at least a certain part of it you know a certain part of the christian religion that that pure part it's very clear what the beliefs are it's like team god fuck demons you know they're not in my life i don't talk to them i don't deal with them whatever uh that's the way to go and that's like i said earlier that's the only way to really escape that whole crazy shit is by fully and absolutely committing yourself to God in one way or another. That's a, that's a easy, that's probably the easiest way to do it. Maybe not Christianity only, but anything like that, any religion that, that makes God and purity and being good its main focus. Anything that allows you to relieve the fear of demons is another big thing, because having fear that they might come back is just as good as not even banishing them in the first place, because they'll come back, you know? Having fear that a demon can ooh, that can victimize you and come into your life without your without your uh, green light, that fear itself is the problem. You know, that's like that fear itself. Having that fear is giving your power away. And what you need to do to get rid of demons is to take your power back, all of it, and realize it's not. You don't need to work at it. You've always had this power. The 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 power that has been given to you naturally as a soul is is the power to just not allow things like that into your mind to fuck you up. You have to give some pieces of your power away through a fear of a thing in order for that thing to have control over you. That's just common sense, right? We can all agree on that. Now just apply that to demonic possession or, or demonic attachment or maybe just, just spiritual attachment. Maybe it's not a demon. Maybe it is a lost soul that is attached to you, you know? Because I'm not clairvoyant, I'm not clairsentient, you know. Uh, there are people who apparently are. They would probably have a lot more to say about this kind of shit. Uh, because they're, types, they're the type of people, I think, who can remain detached from these things and not be influenced by them, but still see them everywhere. So they could, they could probably differentiate between an actual demon and whatever. And the reason why I do say demon and I had experience with it is mainly for one reason. Um, I mean, it, was, it felt like it, number one. <laughs> Especially 
the way that dreams were influenced and it felt like dreams were being controlled at times but um, years later after I had already gone through the healing process and left it all behind I found this information through a movie I think it was through The Conjuring they mentioned like the smell like sulfur or like rotting flesh like the most horrible smell what it's like you're in a space and it's like a weird like there's like a pocket of air like this this space where there's like I mean absolutely disgusting we're talking I mean I think of the joke of like oh maybe somebody farted but that's like we're talking well beyond that level we're talking disgusting shit right like horrible stench um and around the peak of activity for all this or at least kind of the beginning when it was really intense and the, and the bond was forming and I was being attached to so to speak there was an experience I had where that happened and it was unexplainable I've talked to the people who I was with since then they can't explain it either it was like nothing that any of us had ever smelled and it was very isolated and then it was gone you know I didn't constantly have that experience but it was something that I was like whoa and like I said I heard about it from that movie then I looked it up and apparently on like these ghost forums and ghost websites and talking about demons and possession and exorcism and all this kind of stuff they say it like it's like night and day like it's a fact like that kind of goes along with demonic possession or, or be, uh, if the demon is in the area you know there's that smell like a rotten corpse you know uh, it's it's fucking nasty it's and it's unexplainable like the intensity that I experienced it with and like it, heck where could it have come from you know it was a place where I would go a lot and it was like never that way um, I mean like I said there's always a logical explanation for everything and I'm open to that it could all have been coincidence and then my weird little twisted mentally ill mind at the time could have just taken all these pieces and put them together and made like a, a picture out of it um, but that being said like, like I said again like and I, and I will say again even if that's what it was there was only one way out the way out was the same and I recommend everybody does that uh, you know Thank you for watching. If you watch for this long, I've talked for nearly an hour here. Uh, God bless you, and I hope that you you stay away from this kind of stuff. I hope that you don't have any interest in it. Um, if you do, take it from me. It's not worth it. Just focus on God. Focus on love. If you don't believe in that, just focus on love in your life, manifesting love, being a loving thing. Um, and do what you can to uh, get rid of that curiosity about these things. Um, everything that one of these entities will tell you is a lie everything that it shows you is a deception they're just killing time and they've got all the time in the world just like us well not like us we live in a temporary state which is why it's so horrible to, to waste time to waste years of your life with interacting with these these entities which which aren't they're not they're not shit you know what I mean they're not shit but your own thoughts because that's the only way that we can experience them as well as the hallucinations and illusions visually that we might have a sighting of or we can hear things and it can get pretty crazy but just know that there's a way out like I said already um, I know I've said I've repeated myself a lot in this video and it's up to you to find that way out it's up to you to just, to just stop it you know I like I said and I'll say and I'll say this one last time I do not believe that turning your back on the problem that you know is a problem and you know what it really is because you can feel it if you have experienced what I have in the past and it's the same exact kind of thing it maybe it'll take a while like I said maybe it'll take a year I don't know but you at a point you'll realize what's really going on you you will unless you're just dumb I mean I hate to say that but I don't know hopefully you will realize that you have been deceived and then from that point on you can rearrange your ideology so that that shit isn't allowed to it's not able to fit in your in your belief structure anymore rewire your brain refocus it on what is pure and good god bless you thank you for watching have a good night